What's up guys, welcome to G Whiskey. My name is Jeff. This is a channel where I offer my thoughts and opinions on a specific whiskey. And if you stick around to the end, I'll be giving it a score as well. If that sounds interesting, hit subscribe down below. And with that out of the way, why don't we jump into our review. Today we're looking at the Royal Brockla 18 year old. Stick around. So we're looking at a Royal Brockla today. I reviewed the 12 not too long ago and I really loved it. I thought it was really special stuff. Uh, so the 18 was definitely on my radar. It did take me a little while to pick this one up. It's a little bit pricey, but in the end, couldn't resist the temptation. This one is part of their new revamped lineup. They switched things around earlier this year in 2021, and they took a step in the right direction. It was an unexpected but very welcome change. Uh, their older whiskeys had weaker specs and lower ABVs, and that is no longer the case. They even wrote a little blurb on the back of their box here that says that from now moving forward, Royal Brockle whiskeys will always have decent specs, which we'll talk about in a second, and an age statement. And that's just great news. That's something that we rarely see these days. Usually it's the other way around. Usually we have brands that are maybe lowering their ABV, catering to the casual consumer and leaving us whiskey nerds behind and forgetting about us. Not these guys. These guys, they're doing the right thing. So yeah, really good choice. I hope that their sales grow as a result. I hope that other brands take note and follow suit. And yeah, kudos to the owners at Duran Sun slash Bacardi for pulling the trigger. I'm sure there was much debate and deliberation in the boardrooms, but I think you made the right call. Anyway, back to our 18 year old here. This one's been finished in Palo Cortado Sherry Casts. Unlike the 12, which was finished in Oloroso Sherry Casts, uh, Palo Cortado is a much drier type of sherry. And you can tell just by looking at the whiskey in the bottle here that we're in for a different experience from the 12. Uh, the 12 had a very sort of darker, brooding, more heavy-handed cask influence, which I love. And you know, the 12 is a bit of an exception because I often complain about whiskeys that are completely overwhelmed by the casks, where the cask influence just kind of takes over the, the base spirit or the distillate. I do think that's the case with the 12, but somehow it makes it work. I guess just the style of sherry that's presented, the quality of the casks, whatever, but it comes together nicely. So I wasn't sure how the lighter touch they used for the 18 year old here would affect it. I wasn't sure if it would be a good or a bad thing. Again, a drier, lighter style of sherry, but just having loved the 12 so much, I was incredibly curious to try this one. They also have a 21 year old available. That one's finished in three different types of sherry casts. You have Oloroso, PX, and Palo Cortado in there. Looks interesting. I'd love to try it, but tell you what, our 18 year old here already expensive enough. Obviously the 21 year old more expensive still. That one's gonna have to wait until I'm a rich and famous YouTuber. Um, so yeah, let's just stick with our 18 for now. Let's jump into our review, see what our whiskey's all about. And in the meantime, if you could kindly leave a like down below, that'd be greatly appreciated. So from now on, Royal Brockle is always going to give us good specs. Uh, our ABV on this one comes in at 46%. It's gonna be non-chill filtered. Our color is natural. Again, a massive step forward for the brand. Well done. Beautiful natural color. Uh, I like these new Royal Brockle bottles. I think they look great. I think they're a massive step up from the older ones. Uh, unlike the 12, the 12 is like this big white label that covers the majority of the bottle. This one is like a half label. It's in beige. Uh, we have little pops of blue. We have Royal Brockle printed on the glass. Very modern, very stylish. So presentation here is gonna be four and a half out of five. Non-chill filter natural color on the back tells us that it's Palo Cortado finish on the front. Little bit of production info. Great look. Again, very modern. I think it's a cool bottle. I think it looks great on the shelf. This has not been watered. Let's try our nose. Okay, immediately, much more understated than the 12. A very fruity. There's like apples, pears. There's some peaches or like peach cobbler. Lyle's golden syrup. There's some nutmeg in here, a little bit of ginger. There's some sultanas, there's citrus in here like tangerine or grapefruit. And we also have a little bit of graininess in here. Uh, it's not a super expressive nose, but it is very bright and pleasant. And now the palette. Okay. Um, sour. There's a little bit of sourness in here. It's nothing off-putting. It's it's the kind of sourness you get from like an underripe pineapple. You know those pineapples that just aren't sweet enough. Um, there's some honey, there's some butter, 
marmalade, salt, more grapefruits, apricots, mandarins, and white pepper. And now our finish. Um, drying. We have white pepper and grain that carry us into the finish. We have more of that pineapple, light honey, some baking spices, some indistinct fruits, medium in length. All right, so this is interesting stuff. I bought it off the back of the 12. I don't think I was expecting them to be similar, but I do think I was expecting more like common threads, more DNA, more things that would like tie them together. There's really not that much of that. They're very, very different whiskeys, and that's not necessarily a bad thing, but yeah, they're definitely night and day in terms of profiles. And you know, drinking this one in a side-by-side -side with a 12-year-old is actually a pretty cool idea. I do recommend it. It's interesting. What it does is it, it illustrates how differently different types of sherry can affect a whiskey. You know, usually when you think sherry, you know, you're implying stuff like dark raisins, dark fruits, cinnamons, heavy caramels, those kinds of flavors. Uh, the kinds of flavors that you usually get with, let's say, an Oloroso or a PX. But then if you have something with like a Palo Cortado or a Manzanilla or a Fino influence, you start to realize just the variety of flavors that we can get from the world of sherry. And drinking the 12 and the 18 together really drives that point home. This is a much brighter, much cleaner whiskey. Again, the 12 gets criticized for being too cast forward. That might be the case, but I love those rich, sweet, lush, classic Oloroso flavors we got in there. But if you want to try Royal Brock, though, that's obviously not as cast forward, that's less overwhelmed by the cast, this will be the better option for sure. Um, ironically, for something that's six years older, we have much less cask influence. We have more distillate on display than the 12. The 12 has these heavier, darker, more brooding, more intense, sherried, fruity notes. And while this one is a very fruity whiskey, it goes in a different direction. This one has like orchard fruits and citrus and apricots and mandarins, much brighter and cleaner. And the question is, is it good though? Is it a good 18 year old? Yes, yes it is a very good 18 year old. It's not perfect, but it's good. I mentioned that we do get more distillate in here and that's true, but I don't really get a strong sense of identity. Um, I have heard that Royal Barakla as a distillate isn't a particular standout. And yeah, there's nothing really jumping out at me from the spirit in this. Uh, also, it is slightly sour. Again, never too much. It's never over the top, but it's definitely a, a factor. It's definitely part of this whiskey. Again, with that sort of unripe pineapple note. Some people are going to like that. Some people aren't. It doesn't really bother me, but really that's the most that I can pull out from the distillate here. Uh, the rest of the work is going to fall on the casks. And I think the cask play here is good. It's solid, but a bit of the same problem there. Nothing really grabs my attention. At the end of the day, this is a good 18 year old, but it's not great. It doesn't have that hook. It doesn't pull you in and hold your attention. The 12 has a hook. It has those dark, rich, intense Oloroso flavors. And you could make the case that the 12 is all cask. Yeah, that's true. But if your distillate doesn't have that much to say, if you're using quality cask, and if your final product is better for it, I don't see a problem there. So in my opinion, the 12 is the better whiskey. Uh, the 18 is competent, but it doesn't really grab me. I'm going to score it an 86. Uh, we have some really nice flavors in here. It is a good whiskey, but maybe a little bit too generic, a little bit too sour at times. It is flawed. And I'm not convinced it's good value either. So let's talk about that. Yeah, this is too expensive. It's expensive for an 18 year old and there's just a lot of better, cheaper options to be had out there. Too many to list, to be honest. You know, if this was more affordably priced, I'd feel a lot better about it. I don't think the premium price tag they're asking for this is justified. Again, it is good stuff. Some people are going to like it, but no, it's just not worth it. So unless you get it for a good deal, unless you find it on sale, I would say skip this one. All right, that's gonna be it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you wanna help support the channel, please consider becoming a patron. Otherwise, like, comment, subscribe, always appreciated. Now, I do wanna hear from you. Have you tried our Royal Brockla 18-year-old? What were your thoughts? Find a link down in the comments below. Let me know what you want to see me review next. I'll keep it in mind for my upcoming videos. Bye, guys.